Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Yep, you made it through another week and we have a great show planned for you today. Lots going on. First thing I want to talk about real quick is um, our last episode. We paid a visit back to the New York State Pavilion and a few people asked me, what is that emblem on your door? I explained this a couple times, but there's some uh, new subscribers and whatnot. Um, that emblem on the door on my vehicle is the from the 1970 G.I. Joe Adventure Team. In 1964, G.I. Joe came out, and he was a military-themed toy. And they had a bunch of military figures with military vehicles for boys to play with. And uh, But soon after, the Vietnam War started, and uh, wartime toys fell out of favor. So they revamped their whole G.I. Joe line into an Adventure Team line. And they had all different vehicles that were set up for adventure. And it was wonderful. They had a lot of imagination, a lot of imagination uh, went into making these uh, toys and figures and accessories. And so when I went to buy my vehicle, the color, obviously that color strikes you as something different. And when I saw it, I said, boy, that reminds me of the adventure team vehicles I had. And, and so sure enough, I went out and I got a decal. That decal is much bigger than it looks. It's like 14 inches, but on the door, it looks kind of small. But I... anyway, so that's what that is. 1970s G.I. Joe Adventure Team insignia. Proud, proud to be part of the adventure team. Um, for today's episode, like I said, we got a lot going on uh, to start off with. We're going to be talking fluorescence again. A lot of you enjoyed uh, seeing how the fluorescent tube worked. On the, you know, as you know, I'm a light bulb collector and light fixture collector. I want to talk to you and, and tell you how this whole uh, fascination recently with fluorescence began. Okay, it all started off with this fixture right here. A couple weeks ago, I'm doing a poor man's flea market. I see this fixture in the garbage, okay? And I was like, wow, look at that, a fluorescent fixture. The bulb had a little darkness on the ends of the two bulbs that were in here. And I said, boy, I wonder if this thing still works. You know, it's, it's got a nice cord on it. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can get this thing working. I was going to cut the cord. It's a beautiful, long cord. I was going to take it and said, I'm going to see if I can get it working. So what I do, I bring it home. This is where the Pennywise Dollar Foolish in me comes out. I, I inherited that from my father. <laughs> now, I come home and I say, okay, uh, it probably needs bulbs. And this is where I started to learn about how to test for bulbs and how to test for ballast and things like that. So I checked the bulbs. One bulb was burnt out. So I said, okay, now let me order some new bulbs. Okay, so the, actually this is the bulbs that went there. You see the little blackness there? I figured, wow, it just needs new bulbs. I, I try and figure out, it's a F14 T5, 14 watt. I need two of them. <clears throat> I go online, they're expensive. These bulbs are, some of them are like $15 a bulb. I'm like, there's no way I'm spending $30 on here. However, I went searching around and I found on eBay, there was an auction ending and it had uh, six bulbs for a penny. For one penny, and it was ending in like 15 minutes. So I said, okay, I'm going to wait to the last minute, put a bid in. And don't you know, I won it because, you know, they're not that popular. But there was $17 shipping. So it's okay because, again, there's six bulbs. So it works out to like three bucks a bulb. I'm okay with that. I got pretty much a lifetime supply now of bulbs. So I got the six bulbs. I put the new bulbs in. And guess what? It doesn't work. So I'm like, son of a gun. I just now, I'm already in deep. You ever get that way? Pennywise, Dollar Foolish, I'm in deep. Let me check the ballast. So this is the ballast that was in there. So I said, oh, I got, you know what? I, I'm trying to check it. They're a little hard to check. I check it. Checked out okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't doing the job. The ballast was bad. So I said, let me order ballast. So I'm already in. Okay, so $6 for the bulbs. Another $20 for the ballast. Okay, I'm in $26, but again, I could probably get a new fixture for $25, but it's that's the part of being Pennywise Dollar Foolish. So I put the new ballast in, but I was learning the whole time I was going on. I watched so many YouTube videos. I was reading up on fluorescence. I became totally engrossed in it. Let me show you what so happened. I wound up putting a new cord on it anyway because I wanted a grounded cord, and here we go. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Nice little fixture here. 
And I said, this is, this is, I'm so into I, fluorescent tubes. I just think they're so interesting. I showed you how they worked. I showed you how with the mercury vapor that, you know, and the, the tungsten ends and, and it's, I was filled with a little bit of inert gas and vacuum. And I, so now I said, okay, I got some extra tubes. Let's do an experiment. Now, as I was researching and doing all this about fluorescent lights and how they work and how come some burn out and other ones don't, I started to realize there are differences. And now this is a, what a ballast is what runs. It's nothing more than like a valve that doesn't let too much electricity through. And that's what has to run these gas tubes, you know, the fluorescent right. tubes. Now, there are two types of ballast. The old school ballast were called magnetic ballasts, where they were basically a simple transformer, and that, but you had to have a starter. And a starter, you've probably seen them before, they look like this, they go in fixture, and you needed a starter to get, but so they did away with them by creating these electronic, see it says electronic ballast, rapid start. So you don't need the starter with these. The problem is these don't last that long. So, I said, I want to go old school. Let me see the old school way. I don't like anything that, you know, doesn't have any kind of longevity to it. So I started looking up magnetic, what's, or preheat. They used to call them preheat fluorescent fixtures. That's the ones that needed a start. So then going down the rabbit hole, that's me going down the rabbit hole. Yep, I said, now I wanted to learn everything I could about starters. I started studying them and taking them apart and realizing what they do and how they work because I just want to understand this stuff before I kick the bucket. So I, I got a bunch of starters. I tore into it. Now I'm, I'm starting to grasp this whole fluorescent uh, light thing now that they're totally obsolete. <laughs> it was like my buddy Bobby Kanicki, rest in peace. He said... Uh, it took him 20 years to learn how to rebuild a carburetor and then he went to fuel injection. Well, I want to learn how these old school lights work, so check it out. Okay, so what we have, this is a, a starter and this is what the old school fluorescent lights used to use. And inside of these starters, if you were to take this apart, which I did, what you have inside are two components. One is a glass piece, a glass tube with i I'll show you what's inside there, and a capacitor. This is a capacitor. It's basically there for radio, to stop the radio frequency uh, interference. Now, if you look over here, this is a blow up of what I just showed you. And if you notice on the left, you have this glass tube. Now, inside of this glass tube is a bimetallic strip right here, the curved one. And how that works, when you put heat, anytime you heat up a bimetallic strip, it wants to bend. In this case, they have it already bent, and when they hit the heat, it's going to want to straighten out. So by heating this up, this, this will move over and make contact with this, and that's what creates the spike that starts the fluorescent tube. Very interesting. It's filled with either argon or neon gas. If it's argon, it'll be a blue kind of... Uh, ionization in there. If it's neon, it'll be like a reddish orange. So there we go. That's the starter. Let me show you how cool it is when we hook it up to a, uh, a demonstration. Model. Okay, here's our demonstrator. Basically, what we have is a magnetic ballast here, not an electronic start. So we have to use the starter here. Remember, this is outside of the case so you can see it operate. It's hooked up to the end of the tube and it goes here and this is hooked up to power line. I'm going to plug it in and when I do, I want you to see what exactly happens. And you remember the old school fluorescent lights when you turned them on, they used to blink a little bit before they would come on and that's because the starter is doing its magic. And what's so interesting is Old time, like fluorescent light collectors, like myself, uh, the old fixtures, we get crazy when we see blinking. We love it. It's loving that blink. So let's see what we have when we plug this okay, in. Okay, here we go. We're going to plug it in now. Okay, did you see that happen? Did you see that? I'll do it again. Keep an eye on the starter on that little capsule that's filled with argon gas. And uh, watch what happens. It starts and then it sends that little jolt and then what happens is it lights up the tube and then the starter goes into standby mode. Isn't that cool? I'll do it again. <laughs> That's something you never see. Let me zoom in on it so you can get a real good look at what's going on there. You see that? 
I'm going to shut it off and turn it on again. This is just absolutely fantastic. Look at that. And that's the, the bimetallic strip heating up and starting that bulb. Isn't that terrific? How come we don't get to see this kind of stuff outside of a lamp? And now you see why it's so fascinating to see these things operate because it's totally different than just throwing on a switch. Now this is a secondary starter, but this one was on its way out and that's why it was changed out now if you notice sometimes the capacitors go and not the, the not the actual uh start they start to short out let me show you what happens when the starter starts they're going to plug this in here you can see it starts the lamp but then all of a sudden it's not it doesn't have enough to keep it going it's drawing too much and you see what's going on there so that's how you can tell when you have like a bad starter you see it's going back and forth let me replace that now with the other starter here we go we're back to the other starter now plugging it in and you can see we don't have that same issue where it's doing that but if you get that blinky sometimes it's that's what it's caused from a bad starter so that's interesting if you had a test that's why starters are inexpensive you're supposed to change it whenever you change the bulb now as a bulb collector i find this fascinating because when we went from incandescent to where we are now led in between it was these compact fluorescents and the early compact fluorescents which are these the first ones that came out um they had a magnetic ballast in them okay they didn't have an electronic so they had a little starter in there that would actually get the bulb to light up this one here is a uh, you can remember and these were expensive back then these were big money like 16 bucks back in the day and you could see it says save 60 dollars per lamp over time and and these did last a long time because these were made with magnetic ballast and they were also really well made the problem is they were compact fluorescent this one here is the panasonic you could see here but let me show you what happens when i light this up you could see to the one side let me show you it's pretty interesting there's the starter you see that now you can actually remove this this was kind of a guard i'll take that off here so you could see but i want you to look at this little area here that little area there because when i turn this on that's going to blink just like the starter outside let me show you see it there you go start it up let me do it again Okay, I'm going to shut the light off so you can get a good view okay, of it. Okay, now check out that uh, little starter area right here. and Watch it blink before the other goes off. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I don't know. Check it out one more time. Now, if you notice, that was an orange blink. That is a neon starter. That's not an argon. One more time. I'm going to get a real close-up on there so you can see it. Let's see if we can focus. There we go. Come on. There we go interesting huh now these old dinosaur lights didn't last that long they were quickly replaced with a less expensive type that you know now of and now they don't, you can't even buy them and even the magnetic ballast you can't buy anymore it's all been updated and now you have to have so many lumens per watt so but it wasn't that something for a short time these things were the cat's pajamas now this was the panasonic bulb you could see inside of this capsule on the outside it had those two tubes running there, those circular tubes. It also used a starter. This one had a much warmer, pleasing light. Let me turn that on. See, it takes a second, but that's a much, believe it or not, a much warmer. Yeah, it's a much warmer light. It's very nice. Now you're probably wondering where you've seen these glow tubes before, and you have seen them before. A lot of times you've seen them in this form here. This is a little neon light and you see these a lot in coffee makers and uh, on those uh, outlet strips and things like that they glow and they last a very long time and use very little electricity you also see them in something like these testers here you see now to use this to you know if you want to uh use one they, they very cheap to buy there you could buy like a hundred of them for ten dollars um you just need a resistor you have to put them in series put a resistor on one of the legs and here I got two different resistors. I'm going to try out the brightness uh, One resistor is 82 and you buy the resistors. They only cost about five bucks for a lifetime supply This one here is 82,000 ohms. This one here is a hundred thousand ohms Okay, and to test them because you always want to test them before you use them All you do is you take your your volt ohm meter 
and you put it on, since we're testing uh, high up there, you put on 200,000 ohms, okay? And uh, it's plus or minus 1%. So, you know, the tolerances are pretty good. Just hook it up to here, one to one leg, one to the other, and see what it reads. And here we have 82.8, well within the specifications of this one. That's the 80... 2000 uh, ohm resistor. This one here's the 100,000 ohm. We'll check this one out. Hook it up. And you can see this one's 99.5. So we're going to solder one of these on each one of these neon bulbs and see what it looks like. Okay, I uh, put a little heat shrink over the uh, solder joints, but you can see the one resistor goes to one leg, one goes to the other leg. That's just regular straight AC power. Let's plug it in here. Okay, there you go. You could see, if you look over here, this one has the 82,000 ohm resistor. It's a little bit brighter than the 100,000 ohm, but this will last much longer. Although both of them will last an extremely long time and they use almost no voltage. Let me show you what they look like in the dark. Okay, here you go. These are both lit up now and you could see it's a pleasing light. Um, again, it don't use hardly any electricity. And you see there's very, it's negligible, the difference between the 100,000 ohm and the 82,000 ohm resistors. You have to have a resistor in there. If you didn't have it, it would pop the bulb. So that's all you need though. Very cheap, a resistor, a bulb is probably 15 cents there, but you can use them for indicator lights. You can use them. I want to put them inside my insulators and uh, this way I could run them at hardly no power. And uh, they're very pleasing, but interesting, right? Neon, who doesn't love what kind of maniac doesn't love a good neon light? By the way, you can also buy them in green. This is a green neon. It also it also comes with the resistor already attached. Okay, you know, I, I just can't stand not knowing how something works, especially when I should know. It's kind of simple technology, but it's very interesting to me. And uh, we only have one more fluorescent uh, episode left. It's with an eBay purchase I got on a super cool, probably one of the best buys ever on eBay. And uh, hopefully we'll get to that sometime soon. So uh, with that, hope you enjoyed today's episode. We will see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.